Do you love the charm and nostalgia of vintage Christmas decor, but not the high prices that many antique stores charge for these items? Well, if so, then this video is for you because today I have eight ideas for creating vintage inspired Christmas decor on a budget. I am so excited to show you what I came up with because I honestly think that these are some of my all-time favorite Christmas projects. So let's get started. In the first project today, I'm going to be turning a vintage clock into Christmas decor. I removed all the screws on the back of the clock and then removed the back cover. I decided to leave the clock parts because the clock still worked, but I removed the radio speakers. Then on the front side, I began removing the speaker cover. I wasn't expecting to find the hard plastic grill underneath the fabric, so I began hammering it out as best I could. Once I had removed the majority of plastic, I used my angle grinder to sand down any rough spots. I had purchased two little Department 56 Christmas houses at Goodwill for 99 cents each. I hot glued them into the opening using a little piece of foam board to level out an area for the second house. Then I used small pieces of packing styrofoam to fill in a gap along the front of the opening, then hot glued it in place. I printed out a Christmas scene on cardstock, cut it out, and used spray adhesive to adhere it to the back of the clock radio. I printed out another copy of the same Christmas scene, only this time I cut it in half. I used spray adhesive to adhere one half of the image to the inside side wall of the radio. Then I glued the other half image to a piece of foam board to create a separating wall between the opening and the clock parts. The foam board fit snugly in place, so then I reattached the back cover. I added a couple faux trees and a street light to the scene. Then I glued some sparkly pipe cleaners around the opening to clean up that ragged edge. I also added some white pipe cleaners along the inside top edge and to fill the cracks between the side and back walls. I sprayed the little houses with some adhesive and then sprinkled on some iridescent glitter. I sprayed some adhesive on the ground in front of the houses and then added some fake snow, pressing it down into the adhesive. I printed out a Christmas phrase on a small slip of paper, cut it out, spread some Mod Podge on the front, and sprinkled on some iridescent glitter, and then hot glued it to the front of my clock radio. For the next project, you'll need a piece of foam board or cardboard. I drew and cut out an angel wing pattern on a piece of cardstock. I laid this on top of my foam board and traced around it. Then I used an X-Acto knife to cut out my angel wings from the foam board. I took one of those faux tin tiles from Dollar Tree and cut it in half. Then I peeled off the back and adhered each tile piece to my angel wings. Then I used my X-Acto knife again to cut the tile to fit my angel wings perfectly. Unfortunately, the sticky back is only attached to the tiles along the edges, so it came off completely, so it was necessary for me to adhere the tile to the wings using spray adhesive. I added some extra little pieces of tile to reinforce the small area where the two wings connected. 
I painted the faux tile with a couple coats of white chalk paint, and when the paint was dry, I lightly distressed it with 220 grit sandpaper. I cut a small strip of styrofoam, which I hot glued to the small section connecting the two wings. I tore apart a greenery bush that I had into individual stems. Then I began adding those stems to the piece of styrofoam. And for a little variety, I added a couple eucalyptus stems that I had on hand. I sprayed any empty spots with some adhesive and then pressed in a little fake snow to cover the styrofoam. Then I just pressed a loop of wire into the back of the styrofoam to create a hanger. I was so excited when I found some shiny bright box images in the public domain. I used Canva to turn those images into easy to cut out box patterns, which I've linked in the description box. First, cut out the top and bottom pieces in rectangular shapes. Do not cut off the white corner pieces. Instead, cut just one side of each of the white corner boxes. Then fold up and crease all four sides. Then fold in and crease those four white corner flaps. Use hot glue to adhere the corner flaps to the sides to create a box shape. Follow the same steps to fold and assemble the top of the box. Because I want to use my box to create a diorama, I should have cut an opening in my box lid before I assembled it. But you live and you learn. Actually, cutting out this tree shape was not that hard. I printed out a vintage Christmas carol in a size to fit the back of my box I cut it out and adhered it using glue stick. I hot glued a small strip of foam board to the bottom edge of the box so that it would be sturdier and would stay standing upright. Then I printed out a vintage Christmas card image and cut out two small children. I then adhered several small pieces of foam board to the back of the image and then glued that foam board to the box. I glued some little glittery balls from Dollar Tree to a bottle brush tree and then hot glued the bottle brush tree inside my box. I decided to hot glue a sparkly green pipe cleaner along the edge of the cutout tree in the lid. I just used a little hot glue to hold it in place. I printed out a line of lyrics from a vintage Christmas carol and hot glued it to the front of the box. I brushed Mod Podge on the lyrics and on the little boy's red shirt and then sprinkled on some glitter. For the next project, you'll need a dowel rod cut to the height that you would like your Chanel tree to be. I wanted my branches to be an inch apart, so using a ruler, I marked one inch marks all the way around the dowel rod. Then I drilled a small hole in each of the marks. Then I rotated the dowel rod about a quarter of a turn and drilled a second hole at each mark. I repeated this process until I had three or four holes going around the dowel rod at each mark. As a base for my tree, I inserted the dowel rod into a vintage spool. I purchased some Chanel stems at Hobby Lobby in a pretty shade of green, and I began cutting them into various lengths to create branches for my tree. Before assembling my tree, I erased all of my pencil marks. 
You could also stain your dowel rod if you like. I added a little drop of Gorilla Glue over each of my drilled holes and then began pressing my cut Chanel stems into the holes, making sure the wire in the center of the stem went into the drilled hole. I was pleasantly surprised at just how firmly the Chanel stems stayed attached to the dowel rod. I also glued a small plastic star to the top of the dowel rod, and then I used hot glue to attach a tiny plastic bird to one of the Chanel stems. I put a little drop of super glue on the bird's beak, and then I took the end of the red thread that I had wrapped around the spool and pressed it into the super glue on the bird's beak. Here's a fun idea for repurposing vintage Christmas cards. Cut out a large circle from a piece of foam board or cardboard. I'm using a piece of green cardboard that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. I used a utility knife to cut around a large salad bowl for my outer circle, and I cut around a cake plate for my inner circle. Since I don't have any vintage cards, I found and printed out a bunch of vintage Christmas card images that are all in the public domain. To create interesting shapes, rather than leaving the cards in their rectangular shape, I tried to cut around the main image from the card. After I had several cut out, I began playing around with the arrangement of the images on my cardboard ring. When I was happy with the arrangement, I began hot gluing the images to the cardboard ring, making sure to overlap them so that all of the cardboard was covered. To keep my wreath cohesive, I had specifically chosen Christmas images that were primarily green and red in color. So to highlight the red, I went over those areas with Mod Podge and then sprinkled red glitter into the glue. If you're not a fan of glitter, you can certainly skip this step. Then I made and attached a red bow with florist wire, making an extra loop of wire to use for hanging. Birds and bird cages were quite popular during the Victorian era, so I decided to try to make a bird cage ornament. For the base of the bird cage, I used an aluminum lid off of a jar. Going around the inside rim of the lid, I drilled a hole about every quarter inch. I used one of the smallest drill bits that I could find. I cut some silver florist wire into strips about 8 inches long. I had drilled 20 holes in my lid, so I took 10 of the strips of wire and folded them in half. Then I took another strip of wire and wrapped it tightly around the center fold mark. I also used this piece of wire to create a loop to use for hanging. Then I began spreading out my 20 pieces of wire and began sticking them through the holes that I had drilled in my lid. Once all of the wires were through the holes in the lid, I flipped it over. Then I used a pair of needle nose pliers to twist a little curly cue at the end of each piece of wire so that it wouldn't slide back through the hole. Then I pulled the wires taut from the top side and used a little hot glue to hold the curly cue flat against the bottom of the lid. I hot glued a little greenery and some Spanish moss inside the cage 
and then sprayed it with adhesive and sprinkled on a little fake snow. Then I added a plastic bird and a bow to the top of the cage. To clean up the bottom of the lid, I cut a circle out of a piece of thin cardboard and just hot glued it into the bottom of the lid. Here's a cute idea for creating small vintage ornaments for a miniature tree. Print out these vintage milk cap images on a piece of cardstock or poster board and then cut them out. Cut out these little scalloped circles from a piece of scrapbook paper, making them about a quarter of an inch larger than your milk caps. I cut these out on my Cricut machine. If you're using scissors, you can just cut out regular circle shapes. Apply glue stick to the back of your scrapbook circle and then attach a small loop of heavy thread. Then put another one of your scrapbook circles over the top, sandwiching the ends of your thread in between. Apply glue stick to the back of one of your milk caps and then center it on the scrapbook circle. Perfect little ornaments for a kitchen tree. For the next project, you'll need one of those heavy cardboard snowflakes from Dollar Tree. Remove the bow and metal word. Save those for a future project. Brush on a good amount of Mod Podge all over the front of the snowflake. Then press a sheet of vintage sheet music or a piece of vintage looking scrapbook paper onto your snowflake. You may want to use a brayer to make sure your paper is firmly adhered to the Mod Podge. Then light your paper on fire. This will burn away all of the extra paper that is not adhered to the snowflake. You may need to cut some slits in the paper with an X-Acto knife to give the fire a place to grab onto in those hard to reach spots. Use a small piece of rolled up sandpaper to brush away the burnt edges. Apply a top coat of Mod Podge and let it dry. For the top of my doorknob hanger, I created a loop out of a piece of twine that would fit around the doorknob, and then I tied two pine cones from my yard onto the twine. I cut up a couple small sticks from my yard and then drilled holes in the center of those stick pieces. I tied another piece of twine around the pine cones and then thread the opposite end through my sticks and through a wood bead. Tie a knot to keep the sticks from sliding down to the end of the twine. I drilled a hole in the top of my snowflake and attached it to the piece of twine. I then repeated this process, adding sticks and a wood bead to a piece of twine tied to the bottom of the snowflake. And what would a door hanger be without bells? I rusted these jingle bells in toilet bowl cleaner for a couple days. I decided I wanted my snowflake to look even more vintage, so I brushed on a little Mod Podge mixed with antiquing wax. For a bow, I just ripped off a strip of inexpensive cotton fabric and tied it to the top. I hope you enjoyed today's video. These boxes were my favorite project today. I hope you'll let me know which one was your favorite. Thank you so very much for watching. Until next week, bye-bye for now.
If you're looking for more DIY Christmas ideas, here's another video I think you'll like.